the sports facilities, and I pick on Nambole. The minister responsible promised us, you remember last year, when the Uganda Cranes could not host their home qualifying games here. And the advantages with a home team playing at home. First of all, the confidence that the players would draw from the support that they, they have in the, in the stadium motivates them to, to win. Most of the teams get their qualification points from their home games. Mm -hmm. Secondly, there are also other uh, benefits that can be associated with. But thirdly, and most importantly, we then waste a lot of money to go to another country, to have an agreement for that country to allow us host our home games. We, are, we have been doing that in Morocco. Even for the fans that want to travel to Morocco, you are now putting an extra cost for them to go and support their team in a foreign land. The minister promised, I think so far, there are five deadlines that the minister had been saying, by November 2023, it would be ready. It was extended, I think, to January. And we were promised that by March 26th, I think, the stadium would be ready. This um, lack of seriousness on the side of government and taking the house for granted and Uganda, I think is what the Honorable Minister has to address today. That when you come here and make promises and reassure the country, and the country is on standby and excited to use their only national stadium, then we are duped. And I want also, Madam Speaker, to be on record, that Nambole Stadium is a pre-condition for hosting the CHAN, not even AFCON. You, you first host the championship, African Nations Championship, and if you satisfy, they now confirm for you to host the AFCON. And by December next year, we should have that stadium ready. Would the minister address us also in light of the bid that we have put to host both the CHAN and AFCON? Because Nambole is the only stadium that was here marked to, to host the CHAN. Thank you. Actually, the minister or the person responsible will have to vacate their position. Yes, because this time we cannot, as Uganda, lose that word, opportunity. Hey, you assured us, you told us things are going to be okay. We are now here and we are in charge. We are asking, what is wrong? Up to now, it, the works are still ongoing in the exterior and the interior. I would love to to have the attention of attention of the government uh, chief Philip. Yes, because this is a very very important issue. Uh, the inspection report has found the stadium works not compliant with the requirements, and so to speak, it has not been approved for the FIFA World. World Cup uh, United 2026. Qualifiers? Uh, qualifiers, that is African qualifiers, March the 3 and the 4, as you are aware. Madam Speaker, this goes to the minister who had uh, made an undertaking to ensure that by the time of inspection, the works would be ready. He has let us down, and I would love to have the minister uh, report to us what has gone amiss. Moreover, this works, we have an opportunity. If they could be expedited, there is a second chance because we do not have another venue to host this FIFA uh, World Cup United 2026. We will lose the bid to host and then the Uganda will be disqualified completely. And the minister here knows that uh, just last week he made other promises here regarding Akibwa Stadium, regarding Bohinga Stadium, and all these form part of that. Would he address us comprehensively? Uh, Honorable Minister, that's a very serious issue. All Ugandans have been excited of uh, AFCON, but at the same time that there is no way we can really go and play in another country. Remember, we are supposed to play within Algeria. But then Algeria, uh, Morocco has offered us to go and play in Morocco for free. But Algeria has said we are not going to Morocco because of their, their issues. So what is the way forward? This question to be answered by the minister in charge of uh, sports. But I also want to inform parliament that... Um, as we sit, there is an ongoing uh, 
meeting that had been scheduled before we schedule parliament to sit this morning and the meeting is being chaired by the honorable minister of state for sports honorable peter Ogwang. and in attendance we have honorable both of both who is representing uh, the updf who are currently the contractor on the ground the updf engineering brigade that is why the two are not here that said as government chief whip I am privy to information within ministries, departments, and agencies of government. And I know that Mandela National Stadium was inspected recently by a team of inspectors from the Confederation of African Football. All in all, of the major areas that had earlier on been highlighted when this stadium was not approved about two, three years ago, we as a country have made substantive progress, and I wish honorable colleagues to invite you at your free time, maybe in consultation with the Minister of State for Sport, to pay a visit to Nambole and see the progress so far made. The areas where the inspectors highly recommended some changes to be made, then as Minister of State for Sports he invited me and he came dressed in military uniform. The clarification I am seeking <laughs> from the Honorable Boa is whether now that the inspectors have said we are not ready, you are now replacing them with the MPs because you are issuing an invitation to a matter that is specific that uh, the inspector said we are not ready. You are saying, no, no, you MPs, you come and visit. So the clarification I am seeking from you is whether if the MPs by their own eyes, naked eyes, say the stadium is okay, we can do away with the inspectors. That's the clarification I am seeking. To turn them into inspectors, but at least to see. Honorable colleagues, Mandela National Stadium is a 1970 model stadium, which was handed over to us when it was even incomplete. When you now enter Mandela National Stadium, for instance, we do not have seats. They have been installed. When you look at the pitch, if you have been there, you have seen what is there. So, right, Honorable hey. Speaker, there's what a, I can undertake is to... The misleading information that the good friend of mine, the government chief whip, is furnishing this house with, when the truth of the matter is that I'm in receipt of a copy, which I would seek your indulgence, Madam Speaker, to lay for to him to interact closely with what they have written. This is a pre-inspection report of Mandela National Stadium. It has done, and maybe let me take you through it verbatim, Madam Speaker, because it reads, we acknowledge receipt of the FUFA communication with the pre-inspection report of Mandela National Stadium, Kampala, conducted by FUFA for the FIFA World Cup United 2026 African qualifiers, uh, March Day 3 and 4. Most importantly is this uh, program. As you are aware, CAF, which is Confederation of Africa, I mean, African Football, has also recently conducted an independent inspection visit to the Mandela National Stadium. Based on the pre-inspection report, it is noted that the works in several areas in the exterior and the interior zones of the stadium are still in progress, not yet complete. Accordingly to the CAF Stadium and according to the CAF Stadium approval procedures, an approval is only given when the stadium is compliant with the requirements at the time of the inspection, which is not the case for the Mandela National Stadium. CAV is not therefore in a position to grant additional period for the completion of the works. And subsequently, 
conduct an inspection visit at all the match venues must be confirmed to FIFA today. Madam Speaker, the rest is equally relevant. But I wouldn't want to waste the time of this House. This is important. And I request that I lay uh, this copy for the benefit. The source is authentic. You will see it from here. Uh, honor, honor the signatory Morgan. is the uh, head of professional football, Mohammed Ev Sadat. And they are signed. Sports to come and give us a statement tomorrow at 10. We undertake to give that statement. But that said, we should also appreciate the progress we have made on site. Thank you. Uh, let him give us. Let him give us a statement.